Hi, my name is Simon Fries, and I'm a watchmaker, and in today's video we're going to be looking at this Series 1 Le Monde chronograph that has been passed to me by Finest Hour. I've been asked to do a sympathetic restoration on this watch, so in a moment we're going to go over to my bench, we're going to take a look at what needs to be done, assess the movements and the condition of the watch, and go from there. I've now got this Le Monde Series 1 chronograph onto the bench, and before I start to take the watch apart and have a look at the movements, I was firstly going to give you some information about these watches. So these watches were issued to pilots and navigators to the Royal Air Force and the Royal Navy's fleet air arm between 1945 and 1970. These beautiful chronographs were issued in three series. The watch for sale is a rare and early in the morning a Series 1 example, which was issued to the Royal Navy fleet air arm. This is indicating by the markings of HS9 on the reverse of the case back. The Series 1 examples were issued from 1945 to 1950 and they all had a round case with white dials and featured the 15CHT non-shock protected movement. They had two slightly different white dial configurations. The earlier radium dial was not signed whereas the later tritium dial had the Lamania printed below the 12 marker with an encircled T. By the early 1950s, tritium luminous compound began being used by the MOD as a substitute for radium, which was considered to be more hazardous when the watches were stockpiled in large quantities. Happily, the watch for sale still retains its original radium sterile dial, making it a rare and much coveted survivor. The watch is also fitted to its original bomb clip bracelet. The single button on the side of the watch operates the chronograph stopwatch function. When the button is pushed, it starts to send to seconds hand. Pressing the button again stops the hand and pressing it a third time resets the hand back to the 12 o'clock position. There's an elapsed minute counter, which allows for timing intervals of up to 30 minutes. Sadly, the Lamonia watch company is no longer in existence, but it has become something of a cult brand in recent years, and its watches are very much cherished by collectors. The Lamonia supplied several different armed forces from around the world. Their movements are extremely well made, and are renowned for keeping excellent time, making them good fits for a rugged life in the services. The Moyne is specialised in the production of chronographs, that is, watches with a built-in stopwatch function, and chronographs are inherently complicated to manufacture, and for this reason many watch companies bought in movements from specialists like the Moyne. They supplied, amongst others, Amiga, the Amiga that was the movement that powered the first watch on the moon, and luxury brands Vacheron, Constantin and Patek Philippe. This example comes from the family of the original owner and has apparently been stored away in its original box for almost 80 years. Due to the remarkable condition of the movement, it would appear the service will be the first to have been undertaken since the watch was issued in 1945. Okay, so I've now taken the movement apart, partially. There are still some parts that need to come off. We have some chronograph parts on the three-quarter plate and the keyless work is still in place. I just thought I'd stop at this stage just to show you and what I've found in terms of the condition and the movement and the work that I've done. Um, so as you can see, the movement is in really good condition. The parts look good, the screw heads are all nice and clean, so this suggests it hasn't had lots of work in the past. So during the disassembly process, I've checked all of these individual components for wear and found them all to be in really good condition. I've only found one part that required a change, and that was the, uh, the balance staff. So it's this small part here. This is the old one, I've just fitted a new one. Balance staff is a steel pivot that goes through the balance wheel here and supports it at either end with a small pivot. Because the pivot is so small, it is quite prone to both wear and also prone to breakage, especially in a watch like this that it was made prior to the utilisation of Inca block settings in the balance. So with this balance here, the, so the balance staff was worn on one of the pivots. So I've replaced that now and that now means that the balance wheel is running a lot better. And it's always good to do this at this stage before you get the watch um, through the cleaning machine and cleaned up because it's good to get all the work done and then just do the reassembly at the end. So overall I think we're really pleased with the condition. I'm quite happy with the um, way this is going to turn out because everything is in such nice order. And the next job for me now is to complete the disassembly of the movement, get all these parts into the cleaning machine and then to reassemble the movement. So I'll come back to you when I've done that work. I've now completely serviced the movement. And as you can see it's in exceptional condition. It's incredible that a watch of this age can really sort of come up in such a nice way after a service procedure, and this is usually down to where the watch has not received much servicing in the past. When a watch room is serviced, all of these individual plates, which are, you know, in this instance, gilt plates, 
um, often fade because the chemicals in the cleaning fluids over time will generally uh, tarnish, tarnish the placing. And but in this instance, you can see how bright the movement is. It looks the same as it would have done when it was new. And so it's really quite impressive to see something at this age in this condition. You'll notice the balance wheel swinging very well here. It's um, got a very good action to it. Once again, it's a good sign. This area of the movement is quite vulnerable to damage and wear. And um, because in this earlier 15 CHT version, the movement does not have ink block settings. The ink block setting was a design it was developed in order to provide a shock protecting device around the pivots of the balance wheel. And this revolutionized the durability of the balance because it meant that if a watch took a, a knock at some point, then the pivots on the balance wheel would not break because the ink block setting would move. Whereas in this example, in the 15 CHT, you just have a solid dual. So there's no real uh, give if the watch takes, takes a knock. So it's therefore quite common to see a watch to this age without inker block settings, uh, a balance wheel is a bit damaged because in order to fit new balance staff, you have to physically remove the old staff and then to rivet the new one back in, it's interference fit. And this process can often cause issues if, the, if it hasn't been done correctly or by an experienced watchmaker. It's quite clear when you look at this uh, movement, the 15CHT, that it was derived from a pocket watch movement, an earlier movement made by the Mali. And it was also developed in future years for the Pneumonia 2220 um, movement, which um, was used in the, the later Series 3 chronographs. But it's also worth noting that although this is the single pusher version of the movement, they also made a two pusher chronograph version, which was called the 15TL. The Pneumonia movements are known for their exceptional quality, and this one is no different. The fact that they based it on a pocket watch movement has meant that all of the components for the chronograph have been made at a fairly large size, really, for a wristwatch. And this has obviously increased the durability and the quality of the movement itself. And it's a really well-made and well-designed chronograph um, complication that certainly does a very good job of you know, turning the chronograph on and off and resetting. So always a pleasure to work on a watch like this where you have these large components because they do tend to be less prone to wear because there's obviously more surface area and not this movement has any wear anyway because of the condition, but it is quite common to see where on you know smaller chronographs where the parts are more, more vulnerable to wear. So now I'll turn the watch over and we can have a look at the uh, visual uh, difference that we can now see since the watch has been serviced. Actually I was only asked to just lightly polish the crystal and to leave the case and the bracelet in exactly the same condition that they were in before as this is a historical piece with a lot of provenance and by leaving the case and the bracelet alone it sort of helps to retain the originality of the watch. But a light polish of the crystal does certainly help with the clarity of the dial and being able to see the lovely pattern on the surface of the paint there, which really shows this watch this watch's age and character. So I'm really pleased with how it's turned out visually. In terms of mechanical repairs, the movement service, the new balance staff have done everything that I'll need them to do to get this watch into full working order. It's now running really well and it's going to keep accurate time. So very pleased with how this service has gone. And it's been a pleasure to work on such a rare and excellent example of this particular model. A watch that has obviously seen some action in its life, has got a lot of problems, a lot of history, and has really uh, come out the other end well in terms of its uh, functionality and its appearance.